So among the antifungal drugs, now let me discuss about the amphotericin B. Right? Let me discuss about the amphotericin B. Now, so if you take this particular amphotericin B, remember it is one of the polyene antibiotic. All right. So this is one of the polyene antibiotic which is similar to nystatin right which is similar to the nystatin next remember a point that this particular amphotericin b it is not absorbed orally Right, this is not absorbed orally. And this amphotericin B, because it is not absorbed orally, so it is administered by slow IV infusion. Right, it is administered by the slow IV infusion. Next point is that this amphotericin B is widely distributed except in the CNS. Right, so this is widely distributed. Except in the central nervous system. Next, if you see the mechanism of action of this particular amphotericin B, amphotericin B is the polyene group of the antifungal drug. That means it acts by altering the membrane permeability of the fungal organism. So what it will do is this particular amphotericin B it will bind with the ergosterol of the cell membrane right. So this is the cell membrane of the fungal organism and this is the cell wall and this is the cell membrane and this particular cell membrane it has a bilipid layer. Alright, so this is your bilipid layer. Now, what this particular amphotericin B will do is, this amphotericin B, it binds to ergosterol. Right, it binds to the ergosterol which is present within the cell membrane and it will alter the membrane permeability. So, it binds to the ergosterol, what it will do is, it will cause the formation of the artificial pores within the fungal cell membrane. So by binding to the ergosterol, it will cause right, it will cause the artificial pores within the cell membrane of the fungus. Right, it will cause the artificial pores within the fungal cell membranes. Now, the other point is that this particular amphotericin B has the widest antifungal spectrum. Alright, it is having the widest antifungal spectrum. Because it is having the widest antifungal activity it is the drug of choice or co-drug of choice for most systemic fungal infections, right? So because it is having widest antifungal spectrum, it is the drug of choice or co-drug of choice for systemic fungal infections, right? For systemic fungal infections. Now, the point is that so, even though we consider it is having widest antifungal spectrum, remember this amphotericin B, it is not effective against Pseudolysseria boidi, which is also called as Pseudosporium angiospermum, right? So, against this particular organism and as well as the Fusarium, 
right and as well as against the fusarium this particular amphotericin b is not effective so the route of administration i have said you that it is intravenous route of administration but remember in case of the fungal meningitis it can be used intrathecally so this can be used intrathecally in case of the fungal meningitis all right so it can be used intrathecally in fungal meningitis whereas you take in case of the corneal ulcers and as well as keratitis this can be used topically or locally directly into the eye so this can be used locally right this can be used locally for corneal ulcers right for corneal ulcers and as well as the keratitis right as well as the keratitis now now the other important thing is the adverse effects so let me shortly summarize until here remember amphotericin b is a polyene antibiotic which is having the similar action of the nystatin and this is not absorbed orally because it is not absorbed orally it is given by slow intravenous infusion and it is widely distributed except in the central nervous system the mechanism of action is that it binds to the ergosterol in the cell membrane of the fungus there will be creation of the artificial pores within the cell membrane of the fungus and thereby the fungus dies and it is having the widest antifungal spectrum so it is considered as drug of choice or co drug of choice for systemic fungal infection but this particular amphotericin b is not effective against the pseudo lisheria boidi which is also called as pseudosporium angiospermum and it is also not effective against the fusarium now let me discuss the adverse effects associated with amphotericin b now the first point is that the infusion related reactions the infusion related reactions are seen frequently with this drug and because of this infusion related reactions this amphotericin b it requires the pre medication with antihistaminics and as well as the glucocorticoids okay so the first and foremost is infusion related reactions all right so in order to avoid this particular infusion related reactions what you have to do is you have to give the pre medication and these pre medications they include antihistaminics or glucocorticoids right they include antihistaminics or glucocorticoids next the another important thing is the dose limiting toxicity is the nephrotoxicity which is manifested by renal tubular acidosis hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia right so the other thing is the dose limiting toxicity right so the dose limiting toxicity it is nephrotoxicity right it is nephrotoxicity and this particular nephrotoxicity it is manifested in the form of renal tubular acidosis this is manifested in the form of hypokalemia and or manifested in the form of hypomagnesemia right so nephrotoxicity manifested by renal tubular acidosis hypokalemia and as well as hypomagnesemia now now how can you prevent this particular nephrotoxicity so what you have to do is you have to infuse the normal saline so remember infusion of normal saline before giving amphotericin b decreases the nephrotoxicity right so 
infusion of normal saline before amphotericin B right infusion of normal saline before giving amphotericin B it decreases the nephrotoxicity right it decreases the nephrotoxicity but the solution of amphotericin B should not be made in normal saline so whenever you are giving this particular amphotericin B amphotericin B should be made in dextrose right so before giving amphotericin B you give normal saline that will reduce the nephrotoxicity but the solution of the amphotericin B should be made in the dextrose Right, the solution of amphotericin B should be made in dextrose. Next, the saline loading. Right, so what you have to do is you have to give normal saline before giving amphotericin B. Now, nearly around one liter of normal saline infusion should be given before giving amphotericin B, and that will decrease the nephrotoxicity. Right, so you have to do what is called as the saline loading. right you have to do what is called as the saline loading so nearly around 1 liter of normal saline right nearly around 1 liter of normal saline infusion before the therapy may decrease the nephrotoxicity right may decrease the nephrotoxicity now the other adverse effects are remember this particular amphotericin B will also decrease the erythropoietin production. That is the reason why it may also result in anemia. Right, it may also result in anemia because it reduces erythropoietin production. Right, because it reduces the erythropoietin production. Now, now in case of fungal meningitis what is the route of administration it is intrathecal route of administration remember intrathecal administration may cause seizures and neurological damage right so intrathecal administration can cause seizures and along with seizures the individual can also have the neurological damage right this can also cause the neurological damage now now apart from the conventional preparations remember we have certain lipid preparations of amphotericin b right we have lipid preparations of amphotericin b now if you take this particular lipid preparations they include liposomal amphotericin B right they include liposomal amphotericin B then we have colloidal dispersion right then we have the colloidal dispersion and then we have the lipid complex as well. right so we have liposomal amphotericin b the colloidal dispersion and as well as the lipid complex so these are the lipid preparations of the amphotericin b but the thing is these are very much costlier right these are very much costlier than the conventional preparations right costlier than the conventional preparations now the point is that these formulations they will cause decrease in the accumulation of the drug in the tissues like kidney thus nephrotoxicity is decreased. So remember the advantage of this particular lipid preparations is that they will decrease the accumulation of the drug in kidney. So there is less chance of nephrotoxicity. 
right so there is less chance of nephrotoxicity now the other point is that some formulations also show decreased incidence of infusion related reactions as well right some formulations show decreased incidence of infusion related reactions now however these new preparations they have similar efficacy and antifungal spectrum as possessed by the conventional preparations right the antifungal spectrum and antifungal efficacy is same for the lipid preparations and as well as the conventional preparations but the only advantage of the lipid preparations is there is less chance of nephrotoxicity right so this particular lipid preparations remember they have similar efficacy right they have similar efficacy so let me shortly summarize here the adverse effects so if you take the adverse effects here the infusion related reactions so if you take this particular infusion related reactions they are very common with this particular amphotericin b so in order to prevent the infusion related reactions these amphotericin b it requires the pre medication with antihistaminics or glucocorticoids next the dose limiting toxicity is nephrotoxicity which is manifested by renal tubular acidosis hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia next the point is the infusion of normal saline before giving amphotericin b decreases the nephrotoxicity but solution of amphotericin b should not be made in the normal saline it is made in the dextrose next the saline loading 1 liter of normal saline infusion before therapy may decrease the nephrotoxicity next point is this amphotericin b may also result in anemia due to decreased erythropoietin production next intrathecal administration may cause seizures and the neurological damage then we have certain lipid preparations which is liposomal amphotericin b the colloidal dispersion and lipid complex are the lipid preparations of the amphotericin b these are costlier than the conventional preparations now these formulations they result in decreased accumulation of the drug in the tissues like kidney thus nephrotoxicity is decreased and some of the formulations also show decreased incidence of infusion related reactions as well however these particular new preparations they have similar efficacy and antifungal spectrum as possessed by the conventional preparations so this is completely about your amphotericin b